Thank you very much for being here today with us. I know time is uh, very precious for all of you, for us as well. Uh, as Doc or Dr. Tan has said, uh, first we want to uh, uh, let you know that there's a new committee, Central Executive Committee, CEC, has been formed. And uh, in the first uh, CEC meeting, I was elected as the Secretary General. And also to share with you uh, some uh, of our initial ideas about the next uh, general election, uh, although all this is still a work in progress. At the same time, we think it's about time that uh, we get closer to one another because the clock for the general election, next general election has started to tick. Uh, in the run up, to the next general election, I would expect that uh, we, are, we will have a lot of interaction. And uh, for all those of you who are present today, I assure you that uh, as and when we have more information about what we are going to do for the next election, we'll let you know. Okay, I think we have to maintain a very close relationship from now on. Uh, it will be a very exciting uh, month in the run up to the next election, definitely. Okay, on the March 26, uh, we had our third party conference. The new Central Executive Committee was uh, elected by the cadres. However, this is just a normal process. What uh, uh, we emphasize most is continuity in our leadership. So, nine out of the 14 uh, new committee members actually serve on the previous committee as well. Uh, in terms of uh, continuity, what we are trying to uh, uh, um, say is that uh, there's no need to uh, dismantle any structures. We, I just need to build on the values and the structures that Dr. Tan Cheng Bok and Francis Yuan have put in place. But the focus for the new committee will obviously be in the, new, uh, in the next uh, general election. Okay, I, together with the uh, CEC, will strategize and formulate uh, the right, uh, the, the if, uh, hopefully an effective strategy for the next uh, election. Uh, but my immediate task now actually is about rallying our members and volunteers and direct their energy onto the ground onto the work that we are doing on the ground to cultivate more support for the party among the residents or the voters. There's still a lot of work that PSP needs to do to gain the voters' recognition. And uh, we will roll out our plan slowly, and I'm sure you'll find it interesting over the next uh, maybe six to uh, 12 months. However, the uh, spirit and the values that our party holds dear will remain the same. The spirit of selflessness as encapsulated in our slogan for country, for people, will be our rallying cry. And uh, the values that we have always promoted since PSP was founded not for the pursuit of power and money but to realize a society with progress and compassion. So these are the values we hold dear to our heart. And Dr. Tan actually embodies all these values. So there are a lot of uh, questions now and then about what is the role of Dr. Tan, you know, uh, is PSP still a Tan Ching Bok party? I would like to say that Dr. Tan will always remain as the heart and soul of the party because his values and his spirit are the foundation of our party. Unlike some other parties which have a longer history and as a result they have groups of supporters that are quite uh, 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 strong in some of their beliefs based on their past experience, 
like some parties have uh, many members who were previously um, uh, involved in some political um, activities, <coughs> and as, as a result, they were, you know, they were jailed and all that. Uh, and there are many members in some other parties who have gone through the periods where land was taken away from them and all that. Yeah. Our parties have few of such members. It was founded based, it was founded on the spirit and values of Dr. Tan Jingbo. The selflessness, the desire to serve the country and the people. So I hope PSP will be viewed as such a party. We are a modern party. We came out, we are, we are founded on those principles, no baggages of the past, and we'll continue to work hard to show the Singaporeans that we are a party that lives up to our values. So as a result, in Parliament, I have actually uh, uh, already presented many policies along the line of our uh, belief that the society should progress with compassion. As a party that all also values democracy very much, and we believe that true democracy will only come about when there's more views and opinions, a diversity of views and opinions. So that's why even within our party, we have always hold a very tolerant attitude towards different opinions. As a result, there will also be questions that will ask whether PSP is going to be involved in some opposition alliance or not. I think I can say upfront that we will be very keen to facilitate closer cooperation between the opposition parties. Because as our democracy matures, there'll be a lot of room. There'll be more and more room for diversity of views and opinions. And as a result, there'll be a lot, of, a lot more room for us to have more parties and uh, you know, as, the, uh, as our democracy blossom. Okay, so we will, we will adopt a very open mind uh, and, uh, and we will facilitate whenever possible. But of course, uh, uh, it is not just PSB. There are many other parties and uh, whether everything will be aligned finally will depend on how things uh, develop over the next, uh, uh, I mean, during the run-up to the next uh, general election. I say just now, my last point is that the next general election will be, I expect it to, and our party expect it to be very interesting and exciting because it will be an important election to decide on the direction of our nation in the next lap of our nation building. We have the opposition in parliament had actually presented many policies to the government. But within the current parliament setting, many of ideas are still not being properly uh, um, so air in the public domain. So I think we need more voices in parliament. Okay, and just a few of us in parliament is not enough because the ruling PAP is quite easy because of their super majority to actually neutralize or even decimate us. But if Singaporeans is willing to accept that a slightly less than two-third majority PAP government, which is still a strong government by any standard in any democracy, then we will see at least one-third minority that goes to the opposition, which is under the current uh, 93 seats that we have in parliament, would be 32 seats. If Singaporeans are will willing to give that to uh, the opposition in the next round, I think the 15th parliament will be very, very interesting. And of course, the uh, opposition will work towards that uh, in the next uh, G.